In this post, I'm going to talk about a new feature that was recently added to Entity iFrame uh, that allows secure cross-domain communication between uh, iframes and different domains. So uh, this is based on an article I found on the Microsoft Developers Network about creating secure cross-domain communications in the browser. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but the most important illustration I found in here was this one. Uh, so the basic idea is you have an iframe embedded on a page, but it's from a different domain. In this case, you have foo.com and bar.com. And what you're trying to do is actually pass information between the two of them. Uh, this isn't allowed uh, because you don't want someone to just push data at a different domain um, that's potentially harmful and vice versa. You don't want to open an iframe and you know inject stuff into the original page. Uh, so. What the technique allows you to do, though, is if you have a host page, which is foo.com, and you have an iframe, bar.com, you can put an iframe inside that iframe that goes back to foo.com. And so you can always kind of pass a message forward. So foo can talk to bar, bar can talk to foo, and then iframe 2, because it's on the same domain as the original page, can actually talk directly to it. So what does this end up looking like in a practical example? Uh, so there's two sub-modules to Entity iFrame. Um, there's Entity iFrame Consumer, and then on this side, which is in the interact domain I'm working with, um, there's Entity iFrame Provider. So you install the provider on the site that you would traditionally put Entity iFrame on. Um, and when you install it, you get this allowed iframe consumers. So you plug in a domain and it generates a random secret key. And you'll see in a little bit why you need this. Uh, then what you do is you go over to your consumer and you put in the, the domain that you want to talk to and that same secret key that matches on that end. What this then ends up doing is, if we go back to the illustration, um, you're binding the foo with the bar in this case. And whenever a property is passed that has that key, it'll automatically add this additional iframe for the, the communication back. The way it does this, uh, in the code level, if we just step through real quick, you can see there's the consumer and provider kind of JS files that run on each system here. And um, there's also this entity iframe consumer.html. So what effectively happens is um, you have the consumer injection code that runs, if you will. Um, and what this does is it takes takes an iframe and it adds to the iframe the property, you know, that secret key basically, if the domain matches. So it looks at the iframes on the page, parses out the, SR, the um, source of it and tries to figure out if it's allowed to talk to, if it knows anything about it. If it does, it changes the sort, the SRC. Uh, what, the, what that does is it then just notices, the bar domain notices that it's been changed, and so it reloads itself, basically. It triggers events that there has been a change made to it, um, which you can then you know, pass down the chain, but whenever it reloads, it effectively um, adds a link to Entity iframe consumer. So you see in my courses area, I have Entity iframe consumer. Uh, it's at the root level. And because it's on the same domain as this page, it can talk to it. Uh, so practical example here, I go to one of these lessons, I have a couple iframes embedded on. There we go. So there's two iframes embedded on here. Um, Let's show what that would have done in the example here. So we'll make it 98% width and zero height. So a common problem, get rid of that second iframe right now. A common problem with uh, iframes and their content is you don't know how big they are. Um, and you can't just say 100% height, it doesn't work that way. Width always works that way in CSS, <laughs> but height doesn't. Uh, so in this example, the little back and forth communication I have, you'll see that I did make an iframe that is zero height, right? It just looks like a solid line at the moment. Um, but it's talking to interact.ana.pshow. 
Um, then what happens is on load of this page, it loops through all the iframes and then passes a secret key to the interact domain. So if I actually step into uh, this iframe, you'll see that its content has been changed, right? So it has the secret key as well as the unique identifier of this iframe on the page. Uh, so this actually has support for multiple iframes from different sources uh, and to enable this communication bridge. If we step down into that document, we'll be able to see that there's actually another iframe that's been appended to this material here. So I believe it's in content. And if we drill into content, it is an iframe. It's a little hard to open this up here. Um, so there's an iframe here. You'll see this iframe has been added because the key was passed through. And this goes to courses.aa.edu and the iframe consumer. And you'll see there's actually data being pushed through here. Uh, so what you're able to do then is, based on the name change to the iframe, it reloads and then detects that it should add a reference back to the thing that was calling it. Um, it puts the iframe on the page and then adds properties to it. So you'll see it's got the iframe ID, so we know which iframe to update dynamically. And in this example, it's sending the height of the actual iframe content uh, back to this page. So you'll see we're actually able to trigger events based on what goes on in this iframe. Right, so we're, we're scrolling around. That content's very small. But this content, and we're you know, scrolling down the page. Um, we can add multiple iframes. So let's find some uh, some other content on the Interact domain. Um, so let's find a quiz. Quiz is something I'm currently playing with that has quite a bit of uh, variance. Make it height zero. Um, so a quiz, you know, step through a bunch of different questions. It might be a different size. And so you'll see right there, it was able to go and figure out both of these to be this correct size. So I have two iframes drilling into a different domain. If I start the quiz, and you'll see I'm still tweaking it, but it did actually dynamically update the height of this iframe based on the content presented in there. So we have a quiz in here, hit next. And you'll see again, reloads the page, and this one got the full thing. I'm still trying to figure out why it happens on the first one. Um, we'll go to the next question after that. Question after that. And then we've got another question here. You'll see it has the full height of the document in there. And the iframe's content is changing dynamically. Um, so it places you know, bubbles, bubbles on here. Plug that budget. And you see, this is what I'm you know, trying to attempt with this. It's very difficult to tell that I'm actually working on a different web page. Uh, and that's one of the goals of this. I'm, it's all been within the same context of this page, but I'm actually interacting with a different domain entirely. Um, it's just kind of difficult to tell that that's happening. Uh, and that's part of the point, right? So there's a transparent background on this iframe. And as a result, you just see it as if it's appearing on the material here. This is actually a different domain that I'm interacting with. Um, another thing that that in this project that typically doesn't exist is, um, you'll see this is actually reloading the iframe material, but I'm still able to trigger changes on the parent domain. Uh, so this is why I've gone with this nested iframe approach. Uh, so I'm still working on it, still has to um, be made a little more flexible. Uh, for example, I have, you know, it's sending back the height. I would rather it, you know, be a setting to send back height. Um, this is trying to be made to be a more generalizable library so you can do these type of cross-domain embedding um, and communications. Um, another nice thing that I'm not, I'm not taking advantage of currently, but is if you, if you use the hashtag, um, if, if I would use a hashtag instead of a question mark, that doesn't re request the page again. So you could actually have two frames talking to each other without traffic going external to the, uh, the local browser instance. Uh, so it's completely secure communication. Um, and again, if I had someone ask me about you know, injection, 
if someone you know, gets my private key, in this case that I've shown in this demonstration, all it will do is generate a link to the uh, courses domain. So even if you're on another domain, you go from foo to bar to courses, it, you can't talk to it. So it is a very secure communication mechanism. 